All right, so the point of today's video is the state of the RV industry. Now, this is an interesting topic because there's a lot of YouTubers who work for RV dealerships and they'll tell you what the state of the RV industry is as it relates to an RV dealership perspective and units that are coming in, uh, their pricing. So we all know right off the bat that what you pay for an RV typically isn't anywhere near what the MSRP or the manufactured suggested retail price for that RV is. And a lot of people want to think that that's easy to change for the industry. What I mean by that is there's a lot of folks out there who believe that if RV manufacturers all of a sudden were more, I don't want to say honest about it, but if they were clearer about what the actual sale price of their units should be, then everything would be better for the industry. And I think that if the industry had started off that way, you could probably do that. I think if if that's how it's been for the last, you know, 20, 30 plus years, you could probably do that. But ever since RV manufacturers have been producing RVs and marking them up by like 50% to 100% over what the production cost of that RV is from an MSRP perspective, there's this perception that Again, you can just change all of that. And since this has been the way it's been done forever, you really can't because what it will do is it will cause a huge disconnect in what people believe the value of the RV is versus what they're asking for it. Let me give you an example. So when manufacturers were building RVs six to seven to eight years ago, and let's say a $50,000 MSRP travel trailer was selling for $35,000 that had this huge discount off of it. You know, everyone thought, man, this is an insane discount. Why didn't they just mark it to $40,000 MSRP and sell it for $35,000? Kind of like the automotive industry. Well, that's a good question. I don't know why this whole trend started of manufacturers selling them for such high prices other than the fact of baking margin into them, right? Allowing dealerships who may not sell as many to be able to possibly sell them for more or give them the wiggle room to adjust their price to what they think is suitable for them to survive. Maybe that's what everything was based off of. I'm not sure. You have these mega dealerships that have multiple dealerships in multiple cities and states that perhaps, you know, sell you know, hundreds and hundreds of RVs per month versus a mom and pop dealership, might, which might only sell a handful of RVs per month. So baking in huge margins makes it more of an even playing field for the smaller dealerships to compete against larger dealerships from a profitability standpoint. That's what my guess is. Um, now, when you look at like the automotive industry, that's not necessarily how it works, right? To own a car dealership, a new car dealership that sells General Motors, Ford, Ram, Mercedes, BMW, you, you can't be a small mom and pop dealership anymore. You have to be a pretty dang big dealership to be able to pull that off. You can't you can't go into it with like a, a tiny budget and expect to have a you know a really nice dealership that meets all the standards that manufacturers of automobiles expect whenever people you know have a dealership experience. Customer service wise, you know, finance wise, repair, you know, post care support, all of that stuff. When you're talking about RV dealerships, on the other hand, a large amount of them are small mom and pop dealerships. They're not very large. So when you can bake in $20,000, $30,000 margin into an RV and you can set your margins and how much profit you make based off of what you feel you need to be profitable and you can still sell those units, you can actually move them, you can convince people to buy them at that price, then it gives, again, the, the small mom and pop dealerships a, a higher competitive ability to compete against the larger dealerships. Again, that's just my theory. I could be wrong. Some people may be calling BS on this. I don't know, but that's just my theory. That said, though, when we talk about the state of the RV industry today for you, the consumer, me, the consumer going to buy an RV, I would probably say it's better than it's been over the last three years. It's better today than it's been over the last three years. Through COVID, prices got astronomically high. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Even the manufacturers that I would talk to would say, prices have gotten out of control. Getting components, getting ACs, getting windows, getting you know sealant, getting the, the silicones and the, the different things they need for their fiberglass and the adhesives to be able to put their, their walls together. Um, even the fasteners, all of that stuff, the price skyrocketed. In some cases, it went up three or four times. So think about it this way. If 
you know, a gallon of adhesive to put a wall together was $50 pre-COVID, and it went up to $200 during COVID, and that's just one little component. You can see how prices got astronomically high, and the, the manufacturers knew it, but at the same time, I'm going to say they kind of took advantage of it in a way because it gave uh, it gave an industry which was booming during COVID. Everyone wanted to get an RV. Everyone wanted to isolate themselves from hotels. They still wanted to go on vacations. They still wanted to do all the same things that they were doing, but they wanted to do it in their own independently, you know, sealed and protected space. They wanted to isolate themselves from other people, and RVing was a great way to do that. And the notion of, you know, COVID camping became a real thing. Everyone wanted to buy an RV. The industry completely blew up. And most people that were shopping for an RV during COVID had no idea what prices were like before COVID. So the prices they saw at dealership lots were okay. They're like, well, well, you know, this is a home on wheels. It's got a refrigerator. It's got a stove. It's got air conditioning. It's got sofas. It's got all sorts of things that look very residential, cabinetry and all of this. It feels like I have a home that I can tow with me. It was very appealing. So people were willing to pay for what they thought was worth it in terms of return on investment. Their you know, RVs are worth this much money. So units that might normally sell for $15,000 were selling for $30,000. Units that pre-COVID were selling for $30,000 were selling for $50,000, so on and so forth. And people essentially came to this conclusion that that's what they were worth. Then they got into them, they ran into the same thing almost every other industry ran into during COVID and that's COVID quality. You know, one person gets sick on an assembly line, they shut the whole assembly line down. So people are frantically trying to, to find employees to backfill those jobs while at the same time, not getting the components they need to properly construct the units, shipping out incomplete units to dealerships and then sending equipment out later to try to complete those units. It was a mess. Um, and in some ways, some manufacturers are still trying to recover from that. But for the most part, production and components are flowing again. They're not running into those problems anymore. What does that mean for you? Does it mean the price of those components has dramatically dropped? No, because everyone knows that if a manufacturer of a component raises the price and people are willing to pay that price, if you drop it down just a little bit, people see that as a great value. So they're willing to still pay that price and probably even more so because they think it's now a better value than it was a year ago, which in many cases it is. Um, whenever you think of the industry in general and where it's at today, and if we say a $15,000 RV before COVID went up to $30,000 or more during COVID, and this is from a sale price, not a MSRP. So let's just think sale price. $15,000 RV pre-COVID was a $25,000 MSRP or maybe 20 to $25,000 MSRP pre-COVID. During COVID, it was a $30,000 sale price. It probably had a $45 to $47,000 MSRP. Um, a $50,000 unit sale price probably has a $70,000 MSRP. So again, we think pre-COVID pricing of a $15,000 sale price, you know, 20 to $25,000 MSRP unit went up to $30,000 during COVID, which had like a $45,000 MSRP. Now that $15,000 pre-COVID, $30,000 during COVID RV is probably going for seventeen dollars to $19,000. So up from the $15,000, and you can equate some of that to just inflation in general and, and how everything changed during COVID through today. But you can say, you know, a comfortable price range for a $15,000 travel trailer before COVID is probably closer to about seventeen dollars to $20,000 now with an MSRP of about probably thirty dollars to $33,000 in that range. So prices have come down quite a bit. Um, not, not to what they were pre-COVID, but I don't think those prices would ever come back to what they were pre-COVID. There's just, there's no sustainable way to do that anymore. Um, the prices pre-COVID sale price versus MSRP were, were great and there was an RV boom going on, but nothing like it was during COVID. And still, even today, you're seeing more RVs sold today than they were sold, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So we get back into this, this pricing thing. Let's kind of give you an idea of what I've seen from a pricing perspective today versus COVID. So a $60,000 
RV during COVID, which is typically going to be a travel trailer. Your fifth wheels have gone way, way up in price, but let's say a travel trailer during COVID right now is typically selling for about forty-five to $50,000. So the prices have come down quite a bit. Uh, Pre-COVID, that same unit was probably forty to $45,000. So again, you're, you're probably seeing about a $5,000 to $7,000 markup over what it was pre-COVID, but about ten dollars to $15,000 off what it was during COVID. I hope all this is making sense. Um, let's say this unit, right? So this 398 MBL Coachman Brookstone, pre-COVID, if you were gonna buy a, a unit off of an RV dealership lot. Not necessarily this one because this has a lot of interesting upgrades that we did to it that, that not all of them made it to production. But let's just say that this unit pre-COVID was probably gonna be in the $55,000 price range, sale price range, maybe close to $60,000 from a sale price perspective um, pre-COVID. MSRP on this unit would have been about $75,000 to $80,000. So. Again, fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars sale price, about seventy-five thousand to eighty thousand dollar MSRP. During COVID, this unit is like ninety thousand dollars sale price, MSRP one hundred and fifteen, hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So just think about that. The sale price on it actually exceeded the MSRP pre-COVID. And that's, again, very difficult to make them, making far fewer of them, not getting the components they needed, um, not having the manpower they needed to complete units, selling at a much, much smaller volume, but demand being absolutely insane. But still, you kind of get the idea. Crazy, crazy, crazy numbers. Um, now we're talking about units like this that are closer to maybe that sixty-five to $70,000 price range, sale price perspective, maybe a little bit more than that but an MSRP, maybe 105. So prices are still significantly higher than what they were pre-COVID. Um, part of that, again, due to inflation and just due to the state of the industry in general, uh, they are putting better components on. Asdell on both sides, three AC units, pretty much standard now. Um, you have a lot of cool things, more residential appliances, things like that, that weren't as available pre-COVID. Um, units are definitely being equipped with more content than they used to, but you're also seeing a lot of units coming out that are decontented to bring the price down as low as feasibly possible to bring them down to those pre-COVID pricing. But if you compare apples to apples, uh, a unit like this is still significantly more expensive than it was pre-COVID, but it's significantly less expensive than it was during COVID. So again, it's a better time to buy an RV than it's been over the last three years. Easily a better time. Um, interest rates, things like that, definitely are impacting people's ability to buy stuff like this. So you definitely wanna understand what that's gonna do to your monthly payment if you're financing. I um, mean, understanding, does it make sense to finance 30 years, 20 years on an RV? I would venture to say 99.99% of financial advisors would say, hell no. Um, but from you know an affordability perspective, you, if you can afford to buy an RV, you're in um, a situation in your life to where it's not going to impact you or destroy your life to own an RV and you can use it, now's probably the best time to pick up an RV. I don't think prices are going to drop much lower than where you're seeing a lot of your later 2023 and 2024 models. And especially if you can grab a new 2022 model that is just dealer surplus that they have on their lot. Um, it's not a bad time to get an RV. And the quality of RVs has actually gone up. So in the last year, the quality of RVs versus units that were produced during COVID have, have definitely gone up a lot. And that's partially because they're getting employees back, they're getting the materials they need back. Those materials are coming in in better condition and at a better and higher level of quality than they were during COVID. So it's not a bad time to own an RV right now. So state of the industry honestly is, is that if you're shopping for an RV, now's a pretty good time to do it. Definitely negotiate, definitely shop around and see if you can find the best, most affordable price for the unit you're looking at. And then equip yourself with the knowledge you need to be able to do repairs and some things yourself. And you should have a pretty dang good RVing experience. Um, do as much research as possible though. That's the key. Research, 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 inspect, 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 um, and just don't jump into it just based off of what a salesperson tells you or based off of what you're seeing on the surface. You gotta look deeper than that.
Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this very lengthy video. Um, again, it's, it's simply to talk about all sorts of different things, but to primarily focus on the state of the industry, why we were where we were, where we are today, and uh, if it's a good time to buy an RV. And I honestly think it's probably a better time today than it has been for a while. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.